I would like to welcome everybody. My name is Béla Kánási, and today I am going to show how to perform safe hydrogenation with Age Group Mini Plus. Today's webinar has three major parts, and it takes about 60 minutes altogether. First section will be a short presentation from my colleague, Gellert Cipos, who is the principal scientist of Cominex. Cominex is our sister CRO company. You will get more information in his presentation about our holding structure, safe hydrogenation practices, and the basics of the flow chemistry. Second section is about the HCube Mini Plus. I will show a brief technical overview and perform a reduction of 5 nitroindol, but we will go deeper when it comes. Third section will be questions and answers. Please, if you have any emerging questions during your webinar, do not hesitate to use the comment section. We try to give as many answers as we can, but if we run out of the time, we send you an email later. I will now pass the presentation to Gellert. Thank you all again for attending our webinar. Thank you, Bill. Welcome, everyone. Thanks. So, So today I will uh, talk about safe hydrogenation reactions using the HCube Mini Plus. I will begin my presentation uh, with a brief introduction on Thales Nano and its instrument portfolio. Then I will focus on some basic principles on con of continuous flow chemistry. Then uh, I will give you a brief overview of hydrogenation reactions in continuous flow. And at the end, I will give back the word to Bela, who will perform the live demonstration using the instrument. So Thales Nano and Thales Nano Energy are part of the DAR holding uh, group, uh, which is a group of technology-focused companies. Most of these companies have some kind of interest in chemistry as well. Cominex, for example, is a chemistry service provider, mostly working with pharma companies, and their key specialty lies in, uh, in the development of screening Kanban libraries. Agrotetis and DRGT are focusing on nanoformulation technologies for the agrochemical and pharmaceutical markets. Inno Studio is an R&D innovation research hub within the network, and uh, the key research area there currently is uh, space chemistry. A bit more about Thales Nano. Thales Nano was established uh, 17 years ago, and it provides benchtop flow reactors uh, for chemical industries. Uh, we are a market leader in continuous flow uh, instruments. We sold over 1,400 uh, instruments by now. Uh, our first instrument, the H-Cube, uh, was awarded with an R&D Top 100 award. And more recently, uh, the H-Genie, which I will show you later, uh, received the same prestigious award. Here you can see our portfolio. Uh, our portfolio uh, covers quite a broad range in terms of temperature and pressure. Uh, we, our instruments operate between minus 70 degrees and 1000 degrees Celsius in terms of temperature range, and the pressure range is typically uh, between uh, 1 bar and 200 bar, but some of our instruments are operating in vacuum. <clears throat> I will walk you through the instruments going from left to right. On the left you can see the ice cube, which is a flow reactor for uh, for low temperature reactions, which are typically exothermic ones, like lithiations, ozonolysis, or nitrations. If we move uh, to the right a bit, then you can see the HQ Pro here, and next to it the gas module. The HQ Pro, uh, I would say it's, a, it's our flagship hydrogenation reactor, and the gas module provides you the opportunity to operate uh, or to perform reactions not 
only with hydrogen, but also with uh, more than 14 other gases. And by using the gas module, you can, for example, perform oxidation reactions or carbonizations. On the right, you can see the Phoenix flow reactor, which is a high temperature, high pressure system uh, capable of performing reactions up to 450 degrees Celsius and 200 bars. Uh, this instrument can be used for both homogeneous and heterogeneous reactions, either by doing the reaction in a coil or in a packed bag system. On the right side of uh, the slide, you can see the flash pyrolysis platform, uh, which is essentially a flash vacuum pyrolysis instrument. Uh, Flash vacuum pyrolysis is uh, typically performed in the temperature range of 300 to 1000 degrees Celsius and, uh, and under vacuum. For these reactions, the residence times are very short. Most reactions take place in less than a second. There are two more instruments which I want to highlight. One of them is the HGINI, uh, a standalone hydrogen generator developed by Thales Nano Energy. So this HGINI can be used for both flow and uh, batch uh, purposes. And you can connect it with the Phoenix flow reactor, for example. And by this, you can scale up your hydrogenation up to kilogram scales productivity per day. On the right side of the slide, you can see our photochemical reactor called the PhotoCube. This instrument is a multi-purpose reactor for batch and flow applications, and it has eight integrated wavelengths in one single unit. As you can see, uh, our instrument cover quite a broad range of applications. Uh, the H-cube series can be used for hydrogenations, and other, other gases can be used as well with the help of the gas module. Exothermic reactions can be quite conveniently performed in the ice cube, and the Phoenix flow reactor offers you the opportunity to perform high temperature, high pressure reactions uh, uh, under endothermic conditions. The photocube is our uh, photoreactor with multiple uh, wavelengths available, and the HGINI offers you a nice opportunity for scale up. In the upcoming, upcoming weeks, we will have a, a series of these uh, webinars. And throughout these webinars, you will be able to gain more uh, knowledge on our instruments. So let's focus on continuous flow chemistry. What is continuous flow chemistry? Continuous flow chemistry performs a reaction in the continuous fashion by pushing through typically a solvent or a, or a liquid stream uh, through a coil or a fixed bed uh, reactor. The sim a simple flow setup just consists of a pump and a reactor, but there are quite a few alternatives and uh, high complexity setups can be built as well, including multiple pumps, reactors, and other accessories like mixers or back pressure regulators. There are a couple of fundamental uh, differences between uh, flow and batch chemistry, and I want to highlight a couple of them. If we are talking about flow, flow, chemistry, flow chemistry, we usually don't say reaction time, but we use the term residence time, which means the time uh, the reagents spend in the reactor zone. If you have, for example, two feeds uh, like in the scheme on the slide, then varying, a single f varying the flow rate of a single uh, feed would alter uh, the stoichiometry of your reaction, and by this the final concentration and the residence time as well. So in other terms, stoichiometry can be set by changing the flow rates or the concentration of the reagent streams. I want to also highlight the fact that uh, temperature uh, changes may require some adjustment in terms of pressure, uh, especially if you operate above the boiling point of uh, your solvent. And if you have a heterogeneous gas-liquid mixture, for example, 
pressure and temperature changes could affect the solubility of uh, gases and therefore could influence the resonance time as well. I highlight a couple of advantages of uh, flow chemistry now. In flow setups, in microfluidic and mesofluidic reactors, we have a high surface to volume ratio, uh, which uh, helps uh, us to have a precise control over temperature. And not only over temperature, but good mixing and mass transfer rates can be achieved as well. In a flow reactor, you can achieve homogeneous mixing just in microseconds. In addition to that, uh, there is no headspace in a typical flow reactor and using high pressure, high temperature uh, conditions with low boiling point solvents like uh, DCM for example, you can heat up your reaction to let's say 150 degrees uh, under let's say 15 bar pressure and by this accelerate your reaction rate. Just think about the Arrhenius equation. The precise control over residence time uh, gives us better control over selectivity. By changing the residence time or by altering the residence time, sometimes we are able to control the selectivity of a reaction uh, between, for example, a kinetic or a thermodynamic product. Finally, uh, you can gain a lot of, lot of advantage uh, by performing dangerous, dangerous reactions in flow. For example, you can in situ generate a hazardous intermediate and explosive material or a toxic material and uh, use that hazardous intermediate in your next step uh, just within seconds or minutes. So by this you can avoid the buildup of uh, large amounts of hazardous intermediates. Why would you perform a hydrogen reaction, hydrogenation reaction in flow? Uh, there are a couple of challenges uh, mostly related to safety in terms of batch hydrogenations. Hydrogen cylinders represent a safety issue in most of the labs as hydrogen is highly flammable. Therefore, in quite a lot of places, either dedicated hydrogen, hydrogenation rooms exist or the hydrogen storage is completely separated from the application area. Uh, another aspect is, uh, is, lies in the technical side when you perform a reaction uh, using a heterogeneous catalyst. Your workup usually starts with a filtration. In flow reactions, you can avoid this as you will see it later. Finally, uh, reaction times uh, can range from uh, minutes to days in batch reactions. Uh, in a flow hydrogenation setup, your reaction time is typically just in the second or minute range. <clears throat> the key advantages of uh, the H-cube reactor series. Uh, you don't need a hydrogen cylinder for uh, using the H-cube. Uh, because uh, there is on-demand hydrogen generation by an electrolytic cell which produces hydrogen by the electrolysis of water. So your process is inherently safer. There is improved heat and heat, uh, uh, and, uh, heat transfer and mixing uh, in the mesofluidic flow setup and oftentimes we can achieve better selectivities than in batch reactions. Reaction times are typically very short, 30 seconds or so, and there is easy uh, catalyst handling thanks to our CatCart technology, which I show you on the next slide. Uh, the CatCarts or catalyst cartridges are stainless steel tubes filled with a heterogeneous uh, catalyst, and these tubes are sealed on both ends with a filter, so the solution uh, can pass through the cartridge but the heterogeneous catalyst will remain inside for the, whole, for the whole process. So in terms of handling pyrophoric catalyst, this provides you with improved safety. There is no filtration necessary and at the end of your process. <clears throat> it has been demonstrated both in the literature and you can find quite a lot of application notes on our website. Uh, 
to gain information on what kind of hydrogenation reactions were performed in the h cube series. Uh, but just to highlight a couple of examples, uh, there are procedures for nitro or nitrile reductions, uh, ring saturation of heterocycles, or uh, protecting group hydrogenolysis, for example, debenzylation reactions. <clears throat> and this brings uh, me uh, to the H cube mini plus, uh, which is the smallest uh, hydrogenation uh, reactor in our portfolio. It's a, it is an affordable and easy to use uh, reactor for both research and education. As I said, there is an in situ, uh, uh, there is in situ hydrogen generation inside this reactor, uh, which also comes with easy catalyst handling, uh, thanks to our CatCart uh, technology. So now I will give back the word to Bela, who will show you uh, the instrument in details, and he will perform the reduction of five nitro indole. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Gallet, for the presentation. Allow me now to show you HQ Mini Plus in more detail. Catalytic hydrogenations are one of the most important technologies for the reduction of chemical substances, but is severely limited by the safety hazards of carrying out such a reaction. In response to these limitations and needs, we have developed the HQ Mini Plus revolutionary benchtop continuous flow reactor that can perform a wide range of heterogeneous reductions in conditions of up to 100 bar and 100 Celsius degree. Using the electrolytic reduction of protons as an internal hydrogen source. To this, we need only just deionized water with low conductivity. Today, we have prepared the setup of the system, primed the pump, and now we can just change from the fresh pure solvent flushing to the actual reactant. You can see the color of yellow of 5 nitra in drawer. The HQ Mini Plus has a wide, a wide range of chemical resistance against several solvents such as methanol, ethanol, IPA, or THF. The reaction we are going to perform today is a 5 nitro indole reduction. The reaction conditions are as follows. We will pressurize the system to 70 bar, heat to 30 Celsius degree, and set the pump flow rate at 1 milliliter per minute. The catalyst we'll be using today is 10% palladium on carbon. The HQ Mini Plus system is continuation of the HQ series from Thales Nano. The main focus of the HQ Mini Plus is on the hydrogenation of continuous flow of reactant. However, with judiciously selected catalysts, other heterogeneous reactions can be performed as well, such as cross couplings, oxidation reactions, for example. Electrolytic water decomposition within the H cube mini plus generates high purity hydrogen in the required quantity, eliminating the need for hydrogen gas storage. The hydrogen gas passes through an automated water separator, which is responsible to eliminate any residual water from the gas stream. Then the hydrogen gas and the solution of the reactant are mixed in a fritted and preheated mixer. And the solution of the reactant are mixed in this mixer. And after it's transferred to the disposable cartridge cat car that is preloaded with the required heterogeneous catalyst. I want to show you how does it look like our catalyst solution. This cartridge is compatible with the HQ Mini Plus. This is the 70 millimeter cat cards. This is the 30 millimeter version 
And now for this reaction, we are using the 30 millimeter. And the only thing is has to do with this, just you have to, the right holder match to the right cat card and then collected it into the collection wire. In most reactions, the only workup required is the evaporation of the solvent. The amount of collected product depends on the user and is only a factor of time. The limiting factor to pay attention is the catalyst activity. The continuous flow of reaction mixture out of the device allows the operator to carry out on-the-spot analysis of the resulting reaction mixture. Reaction parameters can be easily adjusting and using this touch screen interface in order to achieve a better product yield. Now I want to show the liquid line of this setup. Here you can see the solvent feed from the pump. The HQ Mini Plus is supported by an HPLC type pump, which is a standard part of the package. From the pump, the reactant passes through the inlet pressure sensor. From this point, the solvent or liquid reactant passes through the mixer head. In the mixer head, where the built-in hydrogen generator introducing the hydrogen gas to the solvent. Together, the mixture of the gas and the solvent pass through to the heated reactor zone, where the cat cart is held. The actual reaction happens in the heated reactor zone where the cat cars is presented, both the hydrogen and solvent pass through the catalyst bed. The reaction mixture will then pass through the back pressure valve. This valve has two major functions. During my presentation, that was enough time to go through the fresh solvent to the reactant. So no, I want to change the product vessel to collect the actual product without any contamination of the washing procedure. So on the left side of the HQ Mini, we can see product vessel and the water reservoir. Now I would like to show the software as an initiative easy to platform for this we will using a software emulator and the half of my colleague just to see better resolution, all the text and the details. Here we can see the main and the info page of the software. On the info page, we can just follow all the reaction parameters and the condition and the set it parameters. If we go back to the main page of the software, we can just adjust temperature from room temperature to 100 Celsius degree. We can just set up system pressure from atmospheric pressure to 100 bar pressure. And we can choose hydrogen on or hydrogen off mode. The HQ Mini Plus is capable to produce 25 to 30 milliliter per minute hydrogen. Next to the hydrogen flow, we can just set up the flow rate. For this reaction, as we mentioned, we are using the same reaction parameters as you can see on the display. We have to mention the graph view. The graph view can monitor and follow all the reaction parameters at the same time. This useful option allows you to recognize any blockage and leakage during the reaction. And also there's a possibility with the USB stick to export the previous reaction data on a log file. So I'd like to ask my kind colleague to switch back to the picture of the HQ Mini Plus because it seems our reaction, reaction has just finished. So, as you can see, from the starting material of 5-nitro indole, we just arrived 
for the change coloration from yellow to a pale pink, this indicating a successful reduction. It seems we have finishing our reaction, so I suppose we can start question and answer. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and I hope we can see each other in the next webinar too. Okay, uh, so uh, one viewer asked us to show the catalyst. Uh, Bela showed it since, but can you please again show uh, the cartridges? Just, just uh, from a closer distance? Yes, we will ask Daniel, our colleague, to make a little bit zooming effect. So what you see on the picture is a uh, 30, uh, or in uh, Bela's hand, there is a 30 millimeter long uh, cartridge. Uh, and you might be able to see the seals if uh, he turns it this way. So there is a, a stainless steel frit uh, and a Teflon ring uh, to provide a sealing. Um, Headspace, uh, oh, sorry, and that's the 70 millimeter long uh, version. The 70 millimeter long cat card typically contains uh, three to 700 milligrams of material, depending on 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 the actual uh, uh, catalyst. So, for example, rene nickel is much heavier and denser than palladium and charcoal. Uh, moving to the next question, what is headspace? Uh, headspace is, uh, is uh, if you have a vial filled with uh, uh, liquid, the space above the liquid is headspace. So headspace is typically just air in a normal batch reactor. If you look at this uh, system here, this is basically the headspace in the vial. Uh, is it difficult to change the, uh, the catalyst? We can uh, just show it really easily. Yeah, what did, do you think? Did, uh, yeah, if you because have stopped there. Yes. Yeah. So Bela will show you how to change the catalyst. Yeah, we just used 30 Celsius, Celsius degree, degree for, for the, the reaction. So it's easily touched, but do not forget because it can be more than um, 99, 100 degrees, but at this moment we can just actually, sorry for my mistake, so I just removed the reaction, reactant, and so we have to just unscrew the cap if it's safe and sound, and now we have the possibility to remove the cat card from the cat card changer and we can just use a brand new one. Of course, do not forget to remove all the labels before to use it just to avoid burning in. Okay. Um, how many times the same cartridge can be used? Uh, there are no general rules for that. Uh, it will always depend on your chemistry. Sometimes a cartridge can be used for producing uh, grams of compounds. Sometimes uh, you can only use it to produce uh, milligrams. For example, uh, this nitroindole reduction can go, for, go on for hours. But if you have a compound which is a catalyst poison, 
that will uh, quickly ruin the catalytic efficiency. Uh, So tell us about uh, life of cartridges and storage requirements. Um, there are no, for most of the catalysts, there are no specific storage requirements, but the general rules um, are the same as for, for any chemicals. Um, so if you have a temperature sensitive uh, catalyst, you should store it in, in, in the fridge, for example. Uh, normally the cartridges come in a plastic holder uh, like which, uh, which you can see on the main screen at the moment. And after use, you can just uh, put it back there. Uh, and uh, once you don't want to use your cartridge anymore, uh, you can place it in a, a deactivating uh, solution. And uh, there is a specific uh, exemption, uh, which is Renanical. Uh, Renanical catalysts come in a water-filled uh, plastic holder. What is the typical substrate concentration in the solution feed? Uh, typical substrate concentration uh, can be anywhere between 0.01 molar and 0.5 uh, molar concentration. Um, yeah. Can you comment something on conditions that is flow rate determination? Why and when is indicative to drop flow rate? Uh, so we have some general guidelines uh, if you are not familiar with the instrument or with flow chemistry, which can give you a, a starting point to set up your first reaction. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, the flow rates uh, would vary between 0.3 and 1 milliliter per minute for the H cube mini. And uh, basically when you don't have high enough conversion, you either decrease the flow rate or you increase the temperature or you do both at the same time. Um, there are a couple of questions about uh, the pressure. You can, uh, so for example, is the system stable by working at low pressure? For example, less than 10 bar. Uh, you can uh, operate uh, the system at uh, one bar, so at atmospheric pressure as well. Uh, in that case, all the produced hydrogen is just released into the system. So you might see some fluctuations, but yes, you can do it. Uh, was the system already tested on benzyl protected compound that needed to be polydeprotected? Um, did it show good yield? So the example which uh, Francois mentions are benzyl protected sugars, for example. I'm not sure whether benzyl protected sugars will, were specifically used, but, uh, but we have performed uh, reductions on multiple functional groups at the same time. The next question is uh, about pressure adjustment. Uh, you can set the pressure on this instrument up to 100 bar. OK. 
Okay, if I missed any of your questions, can you please just type it in again? Or, or if something needs clarification, do that uh, as well, please. coming up. Uh, if you have any uh, further questions, please uh, send us an email uh, which you can find on our website uh, and we will uh, try to answer your question as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, thank you for your uh, kind attention and uh, please join us on uh, our next webinar as well. You will receive information about that in the upcoming days, either through email or uh, through LinkedIn. Thank you again. Bye-bye.